DT Swiss have entered the chat on carbon spokes. Now we first saw these at the Roulette show and now we've got a set in our hands. These are kind of interesting wheels on a variety of different levels. The first one is that DT Swiss, that famous hub and spoke manufacturer have outsourced their spokes. They've gone to Vanoa Carbon Spokes to produce a set of wheels that is now competing with the mass influx of ridiculously lightweight Chinese wheels. But they've applied the normal DT Swiss logic and quality control to it. More on that quality control later, that whole product recall thing is absolutely fascinating. But they are a big, global brand with a huge global reputation to worry about. So when they get into the carbon spoke game, they have to be absolutely sure because these wheels are gonna ship globally and get out in the hands of a lot of people very quickly. So they have to be 100% confident. It's so interesting that they've decided to outsource um, a major component that they are famous for. Anyway, let's get into these wheels. So these are the ARC 1100s. Interesting thing about this is that they come with tires. I haven't fitted these. These came out of the box like this. The front wheel is ever so slightly deeper. The aerodynamics they believe should be uh, skewed towards the front wheel. And it comes with that famous Continental Aero 111, the collaboration with Swiss side, and it's only a 26 millimeter. I can hear you gasp right now. <gasps> 26 millimeters, that's so old fashioned. Interesting, we are gonna test those, but the back wheel, is slightly shallower with a 28 millimeter tire. Again, quite old fashioned now in terms of width, but this is a set of wheels that you will probably use in a very specialist application, alpine climbs. Probably not gonna see them raced that much apart from the really hilly stuff, but this is the sort of thing that you would take to your big race, something like Le Marmot or your big alpine holiday. It's That's the sort of thing that you would probably use this wheel set for. We're gonna go through the normal map deck wheel review system, if you like, we're going to weigh them. I really want to look at the spoke tension because the biggest claim that DT Swiss made to me was they are only losing about 5% spoke tension when you put a tire on. My major criticism of most of those Chinese wheels is that the second you mount a tire and inflate it, you lose an awful lot of spoke tension, a scary amount of spoke tension. So we're gonna get into that. Right, first up, as it comes out of the box with a tire on, this is the front wheel and we are 840 grams with a tire. Absolutely mental. Our back wheel, we'll take off the little warranty card. This has got the Shimano HG3 hub on it, 982 with a tire. And so that makes our wheel set, just do some precarious balance in here, 1,822 grams for a wheel set with tires, with tubes and valves, everything. Nice. Okay, let's clear the scales away because our first job is spoke tensions. So at the moment, all I'm gonna be doing is taking a deflection reading, and then we'll work out what the actual spoke tension is using this machine later on in the video. So I'm just gonna go around and check the, the drive side. On our front wheel, it is a radial spoke pattern. Uh, there's a little bit of inconsistency here, only by a half or so, nothing major. Basically all coming out around 13. Cool, so just six spokes on the drive side and then on the non-drive side, what have we got? Actually pretty equal and that makes sense because there's far fewer spokes. So yeah, this is all coming out at 12, 13. And these spoke tensions are important because how you tension these, is you've got to go behind the rim tape to get to them. You can't just tighten them up easily. So having the consistency is a better guarantee of them not coming loose. This all looks really good and consistent, I don't think a lot of wheel builders have struggled to get this level of consistency. So six spokes on the drive side, 12 spokes on the non-drive side, all coming in around 12 to 13 on our deflection gauge. So let's get the tire off. And you might be wondering, like why on earth do we have an aero tire on <laughs> a climbing set of wheels? Well, the thing is we're going up hills is you've got to come back down them again. And that's something that I think a lot of brands who think about trying to make a really lightweight wheel set forget. They can make them very, very stiff and very, very light. But at the end of the day, you've still got to come back down that hill. You want to do that with a degree of confidence and speed and enjoyment to be fair and not be completely terrified. So good tires and you want to set a wheel that just feels really confident at those 60, 70, 
80 kph type of speeds. And that is apparently what DT Swiss have been trying to achieve. I am all for that because there's no point going up all the hills if you can't enjoy those amazing descents. One little tar lever and inside we have TPU tubes. Nice touch. Cool. Okay. Right, before I weigh these again, let's just get these back in the truing stand. So my process for this is always to find the, uh, the valve hole and then bring the wheel to me. That's sort of my process for counting spokes. Yeah, okay, so this is now reading sort of 15s and 14s. So there's definitely some tension lost there. We're talking two points on the deflection range, really. Let's have a look on the other side. And interestingly, the numbers are much more consistent Without the tyre, this is almost every single spoke I'm measuring is coming in at 15. So I think we can quite easily say that the average spoke tension is a reading of 15 on the gauge with the tyre off and a reading of 13 with it on. But what does that actually mean? Before we get this little machine out, I just want to do some couple of little quick checks while we have the truing gauge out. And that is just, just have a quick look at the overall true. So the lateral true is easily within 0.2 millimeters. The radial true is probably a little bit more to be fair. It's probably more like 0 0.35, 0 0.4 maybe. But the radial true is absolutely spot on as we'd expect. So a front wheel, no tube, no valve, no tire. This has got to be something crazy. 551 grams. Superb. I know that there are lighter out there, but you've got to admit that is impressively light. Okay, next test. Let's take a look inside. I'm really hoping that we see the normal DT Swiss quality on our rims here. So that is our nipple head there, nicely seated. Now here you can see there's a 4K weave all around the top surface there. It's an extra reinforcement layer across the top and super clean on the inside. I mean, to be honest, that's like Princeton levels of clarity on the inside. That's beautiful. Really impressed with that. And this is important if you're trying to achieve a really lightweight wheel. One, you want to reinforce it in the parts that need reinforcing, but also you don't want anything added in there. You don't want any sort of lines of extra resin or sometimes you just see debris left over from the manufacturing process, like literally bits of plastic bag in there. This is fantastic. All right, okay, what do all these spoke tensions actually mean? This is our test rig here. It's fairly basic, just a big, screw essentially that's going to tension the spokes. We've got something here that will hold the spokes in place. We've got a strain gauge at the bottom here. And let's just turn this on, calibrate it all up. DT Swiss are using the Venoa spoke, but they aren't making it available as an after sales product. And I really do wish that they would. Fast forward, dude, remember we made the video about the fast forward roars and I begged them, I said, please make your spokes available. Make it that bike shops like us can go ahead and fix them. DT Swiss were very reluctant when I met them at Rue Air. They're like, I don't think many bike shops have got the skills. I asked in a previous video, how many of you out there actually own equipment? Not necessarily like this. You can do it yourself with a set of luggage scales to make sure you get the spoke tension right. And if loads of you came back and said, yeah, we can do it. I think there are loads of bike shops out there that have got the skills to work with carbon spokes. So this is a bit of an appeal, please. Like Western brands like DT Swiss really right now with the price of their chargings need to be showing us that they are a cut above, that you can get parts available, next day delivery for the wheel set that you need years and years into the future. And you've got trained staff amongst your dealers that can fix things and get people back rolling. We don't want to send our wheels away to be serviced. They're big bulky things, it's ridiculous. So please DT Swiss this is an appeal. Get these spokes out to your distributors let us bike shops fix your wheels. We know what we're doing, I promise. Uh, and if you can deliver some training even better, I think your customers will really appreciate the whole DT Swiss ethos that you could walk into almost any bike shop the world over and someone will know that they've got a DT Swiss free hub in stock, they've got a DT Swiss ratchet in stock, they've got a DT Swiss spoke in stock. Um, that is your killer feature in this market right now. So please don't hide this, get it out there, let us fix your customer's wheels. Right, what do we do now we have one of these deflection readings? Remember, we can't really use the park tool guide because none of the carbon spokes have been calibrated for this. They have tried with some of the Mavic ones, which is why we have to set up a little rig like this. So what we have here is a thing that's gonna stretch the spoke and we have a strain gauge down here going to give us a readout. You can calibrate this for newton meters, but we're going to use kilograms of force because that's kind of what we use in the bike industry, rightly or wrongly. So at the moment, this is all zeroed and we're going to dial on some tension 
you'll see how little stretch there is in a carbon spoke as you see me turn this. That's just taking up the slack. Let's bring this up to a little bit shy of 100. That's close enough. Let's just take a deflection reading on this. Remember, as soon as I put this on, it's going to adjust the reading. So a little bit under. So let's just take a little bit off. Yeah, and we're there, thereabouts. So that's our 13, our wheel with a tire on, fully inflated. We are 95.8-ish. Remember, we've got to take the average of all the spokes around and the deflection reading is not a precise measurement. It's only gonna be a deflection reading that we then transfer to this machine. So we're not down to the small decimals here keeping it fairly round numbers. When the tire was off, remember we had a tension of 15. Now, I don't think that's going to take an awful lot to get up to a reading of 15. It's so small, you can see why in wheel building, we don't really go into really small numbers because the movement is so small. There we go, that's 15 on our gauge here. And with a 15 deflection, we have 99.2. So very, very small difference. And you can just see like, it was probably not even an eighth of a turn, maybe even a tiny, tiny little amount of movement up there. Carbon spokes really don't stretch very much at all. Now, 100 kilograms of force is probably lower than we've seen from a lot of other wheels that we've tested. And we don't really know if that is good or bad or indifferent because carbon spokes are still so new to the industry. No one's really come out and given a spec. Like I say, Vanoa themselves don't have spec sheets we can work on. We are very much trusting the research at DT Swiss. What I do feel more comfortable about though is that at the end of the day, this is a carbon spoke, which has got, um, it's not bonded, the actual carbon sort of flared at the end, but we still have an aluminium thread on an aluminium nut. So I feel a lot more comfortable with around 100 kilograms of force on those aluminium threads than I do the 160s that we've seen off some other wheels. I also feel a lot more comfortable about the amount of force that is putting onto the carbon rim itself. How are DT Swiss getting this sort of a lack of variance, if you like? Well, essentially, they've beefed up the rim. That's why their entire wheel set is not the cutting edge of sub one kilogram wheels using the same Vanoa spokes, the same lightweight hub, the same internals. The extra weight has come from extra material in the rim, and that extra material is helping it not comply to <laughs> the attention being applied by the spokes. So this is what we saw at Roulaire. They were very proud to show off the cross section of their rim and showing us where they had added material to make sure that the DT Swiss wheel was gonna try and stay in that 5% spoke variance of tire on, tire off. But like I say, still very, very new technology, but this looks pretty good to me. Now, I'm not going to bore you by doing all that on the rear wheel, but the rear wheel is slightly different configuration. So on the non-drive side here, we've got a single cross pattern. None of their spokes interlace, so none of the spokes are rubbing against each other. I think that's something that's still being debated in the wheel building community as to whether you should interlace carbon spokes or not. There doesn't seem to be any official word. In fact, Vanoa themselves don't actually have uh, their own website. <laughs> they seem to be only contactable if you are an OEM producer. So there's no way for you and I to reach out and buy Vanoa Spoke or ask Vanoa or even look up specifications, which is a real shame. Again, I think if they're really gonna enter the mainstream, we need something tangible to say, yeah, that is Vanoa, that's their address, that's their documentation. I really wish that would exist. Anyway, um, single cross there and then here on the drive side we've got a one two three cross configuration and the spokes run very tangentially the whole hub is completely captive and then the dt swiss 180 hub i mean it's 180 it's not the 180 that you would buy aftermarket this has been made for this wheel set for the carbon spokes but it's got the exp ratchet on the inside got the ceramic bearings that we're used to the hub is known to be good reliable, easy to get parts like free hub bodies, end caps and axles should you need to replace them. I don't think anyone's got any question about that at all. Okay, that brings us on to the matter of price. Now the retail on this is something over £3,000, but I've already started to see them being discounted. Yes, it's Black Friday and the Christmas time and I think the price is going to settle somewhere around £2,800, which is still exceptionally expensive, especially when you compare it to its Chinese competitors. What are you getting that's extra? 
Well, one, you are getting something that is legitimately higher quality, I believe. The inside of this rim is like Princeton levels of quality, which is lovely to see. The backup and the guarantee that you get from DT Swiss is all there. Now, I know that there'll be people in the comments be like, what about their recall? For me, that is what epitomizes what you are buying when you buy from a Western brand. And the thing that really gets me up as a, a retailer here in the UK is that over the years, you consumers have campaigned governments for consumer rights and for advertising standards and credit protection and all of those sort of things. And that comes at a cost. And I get it that right now, the cost of buying from your domestic market, the United States, the UK, you know, et cetera, is high compared to what you get from buying from the Chinese markets. I totally get it. But remember, you are giving all of that up. And I think that was shown to us in that DT Swiss recall they had a problem and it got fixed remarkably quickly. I know that there are a few cases worldwide that are still going on, but from our side, the people that had DT Swiss wheels and got the email from them, those wheels came back in and they were often replaced within a couple of weeks, sometimes even upgraded. Um, that for me is what you should get. That is a Western company being held accountable to western laws and regulations and actually you know taking their responsibility seriously okay it should never have happened in the first place but when they do that's what all those regulations are there to remedy it as quickly as possible before anyone else gets hurt and i don't think any chinese company would do that so it's always a case of risk versus reward and where you sit on that scale is totally up to you personally i am definitely skewed towards buying from Western brands because I really do strongly believe in all of that regulation and support that we as shops have to adhere to. And I really like the fact that you've got someone at DT Swiss on the end of a phone that I can call up and get help and support and parts and help customers quickly. Whether that is worth it for you, only you can answer that. But as these wheels stand in front of me today, um, I'm incredibly impressed with them. Well done DT Swiss. I think you've got a killer product here. Um, and I hope you do really well with it because these are these are really nice and I can't wait to see what you do with the more aerodynamic and racy wheels. Okay, that's all for me. Time for you guys to get down in the comments. These will be ride tested in the springtime. I don't want to take these out in a Cumbrian winter just yet. <laughs>